option of Medicare Sentinel. So that's 15.5% you don't have to pay. The only thing you pay is income tax. So, so that right there is a great way to save tax. And as a matter of fact, if this if S Corp is the favored way of doing business of the two biggest, um, the, the, or two very big groups in this country. One's Trial Lawyers Association, and the other one is the uh, private equity bankers. Those two companies, those two outfits, or those two groups, happen to be the two groups that contribute the most money to political campaigns. And because of that, they get basically what they want, and they have kept the S-Corp alive despite the fact that there's always all this talk about closing the S-Corp tax uh, loophole. And, and it really is a tax loophole, but it's a legal tax loophole. It's in the tax code. It was put there by the U.S. Congress. And it was paid for <laughs> by the Trial Lawyers Association and the uh, private equity bankers. And uh, they, they paid a lot of money for that. They continue to pay that. I can tell you also, Gallo, which is Gallo Wines, they are also one of the, they also contribute a lot of money to political campaigns simply because they want to be taxed as an S corporation. And as they have been responsible, Gallo has been the number of shareholders that can be in a S Corp up. It started a few years ago, it was 10, and then it was 15, and now it's up to 100, and then they changed it. Anybody in the same family is basically one shareholder, and this, that, and the other. So you can now get thousands of shareholders into these things. That's all because of Gallo. And uh, uh, Coors was another company that was involved with the S Corp until they went public. So there's a tremendous savings available in the S Corps uh, that is not available. Let me ask you a question. You know, I know that uh, we've got a, a mixture of, of first-time guests on the call, and we've got a mixture, of, or quite a few of our distributor base are also on the call with us tonight. Now, some of them may be making a, you know, a few thousand dollars a year. They may have just started. Uh, some of them may be making and reaching up towards you know, a six-figure annual income. Uh, if you kind of step into looking at how a person who's new in the business would organize themselves, would you kind of maybe walk us through a program on suggesting, uh, you know, that take this step and become a, an S Corp or, an, or a partnership uh, entity uh, and, and some I, idea? And see, just around ballparks of, okay, you need to expect that you're going to probably spend X amount of dollars, you know, to get yourself set up a business. And of course, this too is a necessary and ordinary expense for your business. But that might be a help to some of the folks that are listening tonight. Okay, okay, that's a good point. You know, when you first start out in a business, the first thing you need to do is you need to get a business bank account. And everything that, that you earn in that business needs to go into that bank account, and everything you spend in that business needs to be spent out of that bank account. So if that means you've got to put money in there from your other bank account out of your personal fund, you do that. Uh, but, but you do that because don't want to see any coping. Coping means when you just have one account or, you, or when you make a, the expenditures out of the wrong account or things like that. You want to be really careful not to do that. Uh, and sometimes I recommend uh, even having a, a, a credit card that, is, that you dedicate just to the business so that you know that every time you use that Visa card from the bank or other, that everything on that should be Oriented. It should be a business expense. Now, it doesn't mean if you make mistakes, nobody's going to come and you know, slap you or anything like that. It's okay, but I can tell you, if you get audited, you'll be darn glad you did that. So that's your first step. Start a bank, business bank account, segregate it. Then, when you file your first tax return, if you've got business expenses on it, you want to do it as a partnership, uh, not as a sole proprietor. And right there, that puts that maybe out of the realm of something that a lot of people can handle on the, on the tax return. But nevertheless, that's a good idea because otherwise you're dealing with an audit. And, you know, maybe if you're just fiddling around and basically breaking even, but, you know, the IRS is going to look at everything you spend and say, you know, if we knocked out those darn expenses, look how much tax we feel, you know, this pizza, this person. And they'll do it. So you just got to watch it. Uh, I, then you, you can file as a, as a partnership for some amount of time until you start making money, until you start taking money out of the corporation, or out of, not the corporation, but out of your business. When you start to actually take it out and live on it to an extent, you know, buy a new TV or something like that, or 
buy groceries. Uh, when you start doing that, then you better look at, at getting uh, uh, incorporated because uh, you, you'll save yourself a lot of money on taxes because everything you take out of a business is taxable. I mean, uh, even, even if you leave it in the business, it's still taxable. So just leave it in there until it builds up to like $100,000. It's not going to save you on income tax. Uh, and let's see, let me, I was thinking about something and I slipped my mind. Oh, the, now the cost of doing these things is that it, it's just a fact of life. The, the partnership will, in our firm, we have a cut rate for people that are just starting out in business. So we charge them half of what our normal rate is just to do business. And another thing we do that is not common is we, we monitor your situation and, if, and if, at our fees, if we can't save you money, we tell you. And then, you know, then you can go somewhere else. But, but so far, we've never had to tell anybody that. Uh, so, so we're pretty good at keeping track of that kind of thing. Although we're not cheap, uh, we charge like $1,500 for, for a full-fledged corporation, $750 for a startup. So, so you're looking at those kind of things. But, you know, until you actually start making money in one of these things, but that's everybody's goal now. Everybody's goal is to make money. Your goal is not to just save money on taxes. That is not what you're doing with this thing. You want to make money. And when you start making money, then you want to save it. You don't want to be spending it to the government. And so that's where we come in. And, uh, and, and you know, by the time you get to where you're making money, you want to be incorporated. And finally, you know, up to 25000 we're going to just give you a break. But after that, we're going to charge you more money. And, uh, and, but we will save you more money than we cost you. Or we'll, we'll have a talk with you and let you explain to you that we're not able to do that. And then maybe you want to make some other plans or change your procedures or something. The next step after, after AC Corporation is we'll look, you know, when we take a client on in this practice, we, we, we interview you, we find out what you've got going on in your life, how old you are, how many children you've got, what age they are, uh, are, they, you know, are they still living in the home, just kind of thing like that. What are your medical costs? What do you spend on chiropractors or on acupuncture or on anything else, on glasses, on dental? And, and we'll monitor that over time. And then if any of that changes, then we, we start changing things. And we might throw in a partnership because the partnerships can deduct some things that other businesses can just to get that. Like with little kids, you can pay wages to your kids if you have a partnership. And it's deductible. They don't have to pay taxes on it. But then you can't do that with a corporation. So we'll throw that up. Or we might use a C-Corp to do so you can get the benefits of a C-Corp, like the benefits if you had Microsoft. If you worked at Microsoft and have a medical reimbursement plan and things like that, which turns all of your medical costs into a business expense. And if you have much of that, then that can save you a lot of money. Uh, so so we so it can get fairly complicated as you as you know these wrinkles get added. But but that's basically what you want to be thinking about. As long as you're not making money, stick with a partnership. When you start making money, that's when you want to be incorporated. And then, you know, depending on what happens in your life, then you'll look at special purpose corporations or special purpose partnerships and things like that that are there for a specific purpose. That's a that's a great foundation. A great foundation. I think everybody's gonna find that quite helpful. Do you see a lot of of change coming up in this next year, Bob, of, of how people are gonna be looking at their businesses or the changes for small business? Is there anything really significant we should talk about in that area? Well, you know, one of the things yeah, there's a lot going on out there, as you know. You know, they're they're fighting over it in Washington D C right now. They may be uh, coming to some kind of an agreement uh, on the tax situation. There is going to be a tax increase, whether it's the one that's already legislated or whether they're going to back off of that one. It looks like they're probably going to back off of that one. Uh, but there, but there, but even so, there will still be tax tax increases coming out of Obamacare and different things like that. A lot of it is going to be geared to upper income people or people making more than two hundred thousand. But it, you know, even even below that, there will be things that you have to deal with that have to do with uh, income tax. I know, but it just so happens that the strategy that I've been kind of outlining for you, walking you up from from partnerships up into uh, an S corp start making money, that thing is still solid as a rock. Uh, I monitor that all the time. Uh, despite the fact that Congress knows that this is a tax shelter and Congress wants the folks that the, uh, the people that, that pay them the money to get them reelected, we're not going to let that happen. And you can thank uh, trial lawyers, <laughs> which probably gives you a headache, but you can thank them for doing that because they are keeping that thing alive. But if it wasn't for them and if it wasn't for the private equity bankers, neither one of us are very like the group, uh, we would we would be in a much worse situation tax-wise. But those two things are still solid, 
out there filing individually or if you're doing some other things, then you're probably going to get hit a little bit worse. But, uh, but most of the big impact is going to come not so much on the 200,000, but most people aren't going to have to deal with too much of it. Uh, but uh, people above that are going to. And, and, you know, and I have people out there that, for instance, in network marketing, I have some people in a network marketing company who uh, three years ago they made like $100,000 or
drive around in motorhomes, and they live in a motorhome, basically, not exactly, but uh, all that travel can be business deduction if you do it right, and uh, and if they're not being keeping a record of their mileage, they're just you know they're throwing away their biggest expense. That makes a lot of sense. Is there anything else you want to fill in before we open up the lines for questions, Bob?
punch and make them take it back than it is to play uh, play nice with them to start with because they're not going to let you take what you want to take anyway. So let them take a bunch of them and then let them argue with you about it. Now, just one more question, a couple more questions. Sometimes what I do is I put an extra three, 4,000 miles on. So if they do audit me, I can say, well, okay, take three, 4,000 miles off. I mean, is that... Uh, I would, okay, first of all, I would never say that to them. No, I know, but I'm doing it in my mind. I'm doing well, it Okay, up. that's fine. I have no problems with that. I, I have seen the other thing done, and I did it myself one time when I knew somebody was going to get audited. I'd save back a couple of deductions, and when they audited them, I threw them into the pie, and they ended up having to give it back to the uh, but, but basically, in this environment today, the IRS is not going to be reasonable. They're going to be looking for every opportunity that they can to squeeze money out of you. And I would, I would basically, I would be polite to them, but I would ask, no matter what they said, I would say, well, wait a minute, you're, you know, that's a mistake if this is a legitimate business that you just been. I use those words, ordinary and necessary, because that, that tells them you know what you're talking about. Um, but, you know, basically, if, if you get audited, you probably want to deal with a professional. You want to get somebody like me involved to do it. Okay, I got one more question. Um, okay. do, if you take people out or you take them, you know, for lunch or everything, do you consider that entertainment or do you consider no. that a business expense? Because inter entertainment is 50%, isn't it? Well, so are meals. Meals and entertainment, they're just they're treated the same way. I would not consider that entertainment, however, I would consider that a business meal, or I would consider that a prospecting meal, or an and, 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 and you want to make sure you're not, if they find out that you're just going out to feel people out, they won't let you do it. But if you're actually, they won't allow the deduction. But if you're going out and having lunch with them to present the deal, or if you're taking them to coffee to present the deal, or something like that, and you're actually trying to sign them up, then they will be Okay, so you got to be careful then of whether yeah, it's yeah, an entertainment or a business expense. Right, right. you got to watch the, uh, the descriptions because they, they will hang their hat on that. Okay. All right. Well, that's all i got for now. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, you know, there was a... Then I need to look elsewhere. Well, 
I would think so. Now, I will say Texas, I've, I've not seen as many individual audits in Texas. In some states, I see a lot of them. I see them in Iowa. I see them in Colorado. I see them in, uh, you know, in different states. But, but not all states, and every state is still is trying to gear up to, to do more of them. And some of them are just not getting there yet. Wow. All right. But I All right. have clients in Texas who got audited just because they filed a schedule C. Okay. Well, that's what we've always filed because that's what your I focus is. Well, it didn't even make me feel Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yes. Bob. Okay. Yes. Bob, this is Doreen again. Would you mind giving your office phone number and then tell me what you're in 46 states? Which states? Are you not licensed or don't have a, a company yet? Well, I, it's not a license thing. I just don't have to have any clients in New Hampshire. Uh, okay. They're up in the, in the Northeast. Uh, let's see, we have one in Maine. We have some in Maine. We have some in New York. We have some in Massachusetts. I don't remember which states they are, but I can remember. Oh, okay. We don't have any right now. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in New Hampshire, give me a call. I'd love to have you. And then you'll give us your phone number? Uh, my number is 970. 888, if you want to call toll free, 
Enjoy your family and your friends. 